Happy Moundville Monday to everyone. Uh, we are going to be doing a live stream this morning uh, for Moundville Archaeological Park. We're just going to take a minute here and uh, make sure everything is broadcasting as it should. Uh, it looks like we are live on the Moundville Archaeological Park's Facebook page, so that is correct. We should also be live streaming on the UA Museum's YouTube channel, which we are, which you can find at youtube.com slash UA Museums in case uh, you prefer YouTube as your live streaming platform. Uh, that's okay. We don't take any offense to it. So you can, you can watch either on Facebook or YouTube. It is your preference. All right. Well, I think uh, we'll go ahead and get started today. Welcome to today's Museums from Your Home live stream presented by the University of Alabama Museums. My name is Rebecca Johnson and I'm the Communication Specialist for UA Museums. And with me today are Lindsay Gordon, the Education Outreach Coordinator at Mountville Archaeological Park, and Allie Sorley, the Education Outreach Coordinator at the Alabama Museum of Natural History. So good morning, ladies. Morning. Good morning. Happy Mountville Monday, everybody. All right. Well, before we get started into our topic today, which is about bugs, I uh, just want to remind everybody that while we are broadcasting, feel free to ask any questions in the comments if you have any. And uh, just remember, this is live, so anything can happen. So hang in there in case we have any issues. Hopefully we won't, uh, but just want to let y'all know about that. So uh, now I guess we could get it now that we've gotten all that business out of the way. Uh, let's get into our topic today. So how, how should we get started talking about bugs at Moundville? Well, there is a wonderful event coming up. It's going to be virtual. It's going to be the Bama Bug Fest, and it's going to be on the web. So that's going to be happening later. Well, to starting tomorrow, right, Allie? Yeah, um, starting tomorrow. So we have a, so Moundville is very, it has lots of nature, and it's very wonderful. That's why um, all of our wonderful tribal people picked it um, as a place to settle at one point. So we're going to talk a little bit about some of those bugs and even last week um a lot of the bugs were even mentioned in dr kent riley's iconography uh talk which was wonderful and he talked specifically about mothra but can you talk to us a little bit about like what is a bug what identifies as a bug or an insect yeah absolutely um i also want to apologize i have a very um we'll say curious cat that is <laughs> roaming around and so she has taken a strong interest in being on the internet and live streaming today. So <laughs> I'm trying to keep her at bay, but there's a chance there might be a cat sighting. Um, so sorry about that, everyone. But um, I don't know why. She's really into it today. Um, but yeah, so so Moundville is, I mean, everyone that's been to the park knows that not only is it this wonderful, you know, cultural and historic site, but it's also nature, just nature everywhere. Um, and there are beautiful uh hiking paths that are um that have been established at the park that you can take and just kind of get real close to those trees if you ever go there for events usually the events are um are oftentimes are outside so you get a chance to be around the the tree line as well as just like the open grass areas um you know where you're next to a river you are um in different types of brush or tree uh, like plant density and, and things like the areas. So there's a lot of different nature specific nature types of area that are at Moundville that just open the way for, pave the way for lots of different types of insects that are there. You know, insects that need open grassy spaces, you'll find at Moundville. Insects that love some of the plants that are grown in the garden, you'll find there. Um, insects that are really need a dense tree line, you'll find there. And so, and, and just everything else in between. So Moundville is kind of a perfect place if insects are uh, something that you're interested in or maybe not interested in and want to learn a little bit more about. Um, and Moundville is kind of the perfect place to go visit and get to know them a little bit. So because of that, um, and it seems like based on um, the live stream from last week that they've been a part of Moundville life and the, the life of the people that live there for a really long time. So um, that's why we were talking about wanting to talk about insects today. Um, but okay, so insect. This is one of my favorite things to talk about, but what makes an insect an insect? So I think a lot of times we think about like little things that crawl near us or fly and swoop near our eye, immediately bug and it's gross and like, let's get out of, I don't like it. You agree? <laughs> like flying yeah. things, crawling things, bug. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. my normal colloquialism phrase. I don't really do bugs. Like, I don't right, see, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. 
<laughs> so um, we're going to, you know, get real scientific and like nerdy about it. Um, there are differences between insects and bugs. Um, oftentimes, you know, the little creepy crawly things. Yes, definitely. But when we say the word bug, a lot of times we really mean insect. Um, and so an insect basically like just there's a couple basic things that an insect needs to have to be called an insect. So six legs, that's a big one. If it's got more than six legs, it is not an insect. If it's got less than six legs, it probably got into a fight or something. Also not an insect. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> but also not an insect. Um, so the uh, so six legs is a big one. And then it also has three body segments. So um, three distinct segments, a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. Um, and then um, most of the time, wings are involved in an insect. Most of the time, the thing has wings. And then antenna are another one that you'll find that are common parts of insects as well. So if it has those things, then it's pretty safe to call it an insect. The leg thing is a really big one. And then the three segment uh, body is a really big one. The other ones, like every insect, are always going to have the, the six legs and the three segments. Um, the other ones, some of them wings, some of them this, some of them that. Mm -hmm. So um, now, if it's a bug, though, like a true bug, true bugs, the way that you can identify true bugs is through their mouth parts. So they have this long, slender, kind of like a straw, like tube type mouth part that is used to pierce uh, plant material, um, sometimes skin as well, but plant material to like, to suck out fluids. So like if it's in a plant to suck out nectar or to suck out, you know, um, just other fluids that are in so the is, plant. That is like want. a mosquito a bug? Yeah, so like, well, um, like those, and then people have, op like cicadas are bugs cicadas, too. Yeah. Um, people have often heard of the assassin bug. I think people really like mm -hmm. um, assassin bugs use their mouthpiece to suck out the blood of other insects. So like those, that's the big one for insects is that the, but I mean, for bugs, I'm sorry. Bugs also have all the other insect parts, the so six legs, the three parts, but mm -hmm. the bugs have to have that mouthpiece. So, um, but uh I think a lot of time, you know, we just use the words bug kind of interchangeably with insect. But if we were going to get real scientific and real specific, those are the kind of differences between the two. Now, if you want to learn more about them, this is very much the surface layer. But if you want to learn more about them. Oh, yeah. Look at those beautiful ones. Oh, fancy. Yeah. The assassin bug is kind of a cool one. Um, they are. Uh, there's that one picture, I think, of it with the bee. If you go, I think it's the one right below it. There it is. Look at that. Ooh. Right? Um, so assassin bugs are real cool. But oftentimes, uh, bugs will use that adaptive mouth part to um, to uh, to attack plants other than mm -hmm. other insects. But, um, but I think one of the more, I don't know, one of the, my favorite things about insects is that, I mean, there are over a million species of them all over the world. And, you know, new ones are being found all the time. And so, uh, you know, we, we definitely, there's, I think it would be safe to say that there's definitely not, um, you know, every time you think that you have the complete list of insects on our planet, then like other ones are found and new ones are found. And Moundville is a really great place to go to find species, lots and lots of different species. Of, sorry, there's a cat sighting happening. Okay. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> that's zoe everyone <laughs> hi zoe you're <laughs> really a fan of insects um, i thought she was going to turn off of the desk but she just went straight across um anyway but uh but you know this insects are a, a numerous uh, species and are, are a numerous grouping of animals and, and we find them all over the world and there's just so many but Moundville is a really great place for that because it does have so many different you know like ecosystems and different types of environment that lots of different bugs can enjoy adapt and live in awesome so yes. I love, so we talked about a lot, a lot about moths and mothra last week, and everybody knows that I love butterflies. Um, so what's the difference between a moth and a butterfly? Can a moth be a butterfly? Can a butterfly be a moth? 
<laughs> Help me. <laughs> so, and I, I don't want to go too much into this because this is one of the segments we have for Bug Fest. Oh, okay. So, but so I get to learn more good, later. Exactly. But <laughs> I can give you like, I can give you the, the beginnings just to like tantalize you just a little bit to watch. Okay. I'm excited. Later. So um, there's, I think there's, and I'm not an entomologist, so, but I believe that there is times where there can be some debate, you know, where there's like still some discussion about the difference between the two. There are more moths than there are butterflies. And by that, I mean like species wise, there are more species of moths than butterflies. For the most part, butterflies, when they're resting, there's, their wings are up. Hmm. And moths, when they're resting, their wings are out. So like, if you see, um, if you see one resting on, you know, a tree or whatever, or a plant or whatever, if their wings are up and folded together, that's a pretty good indication that it is a butterfly. If they're resting with their wings out, it's a good indication that they're a moth. Um, but again, you know, as much as we want like all of nature things to fit into specific rules, um, mm -hmm. so there's always exceptions, <laughs> there's always differences. But I think as a pretty surface, designation the wings are a really good way to think about it also moths are really neat because like the male ones have these really big fluffy like things on their heads um and so a lot of like but butterflies won't really have that so i don't know they're just really neat again oh look there's another cat <laughs> i just saw her <laughs> in my corner um but oh yeah look so like one if you guys are here around in tuscaloosa the luna moth is one that we see quite often um, that green one, it's beautiful. We see it a lot um, in our backyards. You see it? Have you seen those before, Lindsay? I think so, yeah. Yeah, we see those. Um, we actually, the Natural History Museum in Moundville um, partnered for an event called Moth Fest a couple of years ago. Do you remember that, Lindsay? Yeah. Yeah, so we did, it was like an insect-based, um, it's actually where uh, Bug Fest in insect terms, metamorphosed from. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. but this is bug fest really got its start. It started out as this moth fest. But um, we were at Moundville and we were doing this this um, thing. It's called uh, black lighting, which is where you like basically put a big spotlight on a sheet, like a white sheet, and you do it um, at night and like in dusk and then at night. And it just attracts a lot of insects there. And we were able to um briefly capture and then release later but capture record the species and then um you know release them later and we were very successful and found many many species of you know not only moths but here comes a cat okay sorry everyone <laughs> Not only moths, but um, but uh, lots of other you know species of insects that were a part of that, um, and so it was just it was a great since has or uh, bug or moth fest had moved around to different locations since then, and now bug fest is well, when we have it in person, it's at the transportation museum um, off of River Road, but um, <laughs> but it was like Moundville was such a great location for it because of it being a really great place for insects in general. So we were able to find uh, lots of different ones and, and get to introduce people to lots of different species of insects that were found there. It's awesome. Yeah, I yeah. liked Mothfest a lot. I learned a lot. I learned a lot always at Bugfest because again, that's never really been my thing. But I feel like I learned a lot. I think last year was really fun with the in-person one which you'll look forward to next year with the, we had cricket spitting. That was so interesting to learn about. <laughs> cricket, yeah, it was my first cricket spitting experience also. <laughs> I did not do well. I just handed out the crickets. <laughs> to do so. <laughs> there, unfortunately, there will not be cricket spitting virtually this year, but oh, that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> Um, another cool thing um, that we use at the park, and um, if you could talk a little bit more about it too, that Dr. Friel I know uses a lot, but I usually need a lot of help when I find a bug or I find anything <laughs> out at the park. So we use the iNaturalist app a lot um, so that we can get in touch with different entomologists to figure out like, what is this bug? Because I think one time we were out at the garden, we had no idea what that what that bug was, but we're able to yes. map things. Can you talk a little bit about the iNaturalist app? 
Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, Dr. Frio is definitely the expert on this one, but it is an app that I personally also use. And it's just a great way, you know, if you're out in the nature and world um, and you find something you're not sure of, you can take a picture of it and then you can upload it to this app. And the app is free to download, but you can upload it to this app. Um, there you go. Yeah. And there's even yeah. like a web interface that you can um, can work with. So if you don't have it on your phone, I believe you can do everything online, too. But um, you can upload this picture and then um, experts and, and, and um, people who are more knowledgeable than myself or maybe yourself in that situation are able to identify it and tell you about you know what it is that you're looking at. Um, and then on t and then after that, if you're interested in kind of just seeing what's in your area, it's all geotech. So you can take. Um, it's all uh, based on locations. You're on your location with satellites and however else technology does it. But um, so you can, you know, look at your area and see all of the observations. That's what they're called. Those, the, each time you upload something, it's an observation. Mm -hmm. So you can see all those observations that are in your area and get to learn more about some of the things that you can see when you're out on a hike. Or I mean, honestly, even when you're just sitting on your back porch and seeing something crawl toward you, you know, um, but you can do it for like insects or birds or animals or plants, um, lots of different ways that you can use it. Um, I was on a hike once that there was a, a, a species of tree that I had not, I was not very familiar with. Um, and actually I was in Kentucky at the time, but there was a tree I wasn't really familiar with. So I took a bunch of pictures of the tree and uploaded them. And then, I mean, within like an hour or two, like two at the oh, most, wow. I think it was even like an hour, but people, several people had come back and and identified it for me. And so we were still out in, during that hike, we were still out on that hike. And when we looped back around and came past that tree, we were able to identify it and, and understand what it was um, when we were still out there, which was really neat. Now, I don't know that that's gonna be, don't take my word on that for that being like the average length of time for an observation to come back, mm -hmm. but it just happened to be that way for me that time. Um, when I've used it often, when I didn't know what an insect was or if I wasn't quite sure what this bird was. Um, I've used it often. It's been a really nice resource. And it's kind of neat because you get to connect with people that are across the country and across and global um, in a way that maybe you wouldn't get to connect with people, but, you know, otherwise. So yeah. it's another really nice aspect of it. Um, Rebecca now has um, our observations from the park. So if you're, whenever we, you know, open up um, ever out at, at the park and you want to upload things to iNaturalist, what it'll do is it basically helps us gather data for what's in the park as well. So please upload things anywhere. Um, but if you're at the park and you find something, upload it as well so that we can know what species and different animals or plants or things are out, out there as well. So it's a good data bank for us as well. Um, Rebecca, could I ask a favor? Could you go up to the, the dog bane beetle? One more time. I just saw it, but there it is. Oh Lindsay yeah. Beetle. That's the one we looked at. That's the beetle. one. Yeah. So <laughs> Lindsay and, uh, at one point, I don't know when it happened, but at one point, Lindsay and I were out in the garden together with, who were we with Lindsay? Anyway, I remember, but yeah, yeah, we were out in the garden and, um, we found this shiny, beautiful beetle and we had no idea what it was. We had all these different, um, theories but we weren't quite sure and um i naturally helped us to identify what there's a cat coming i naturally helped us to identify <laughs> there it is it helped us to identify um come here, all right helped us to identify what that was which is really neat um there was even um an isolation observation like video on the dog bane beetle too which is kind of cool which i think those are up somewhere that you can access if you want to see it crawling around and moving around. Yeah. Look how pretty that is. I think. We and now them. every time we're there and we see dog bane, we can know to potentially find a dog bane leaf beetle. Right. Yeah. yeah we have a, an update today. Our Mountville Monday is on the garden. So you'll get to see that, that dog bane that um, the beetle is sitting on. <laughs> oh, cool. You get to and, see the plant. Yeah. The plant. Cool. So yeah, like yeah, we use it often to figure out what's <laughs> what's happening at the park. It's nice because it's like it's like having a pocket full of experts, you know, just yeah. literally at your fingertips that are just excited, like willing to help you out with things you're not a hundred percent sure about. So that's super. And awesome. for me, often it's like 
2% sure about it. Please help me with the other 98. <laughs> you say, yeah, I'm still help learning. Me learn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> still learning all the time. <laughs> um, but yeah. So. so I was like, yeah, we I loved having Moth Fest at the park and we love Bama Bug Fest when it's at Transportation Museum and we're going to love it when it's on the web. So can you tell us a little bit about what we're going to have to look forward to in the next couple of weeks and all of the wonderful days. I'm excited about it. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're looking forward to it too. Um, so normally it is a one day, four hour program, but now that it's virtual, we will offer three weeks, three days a week and four times a day of bug and insect related material, which we're really excited about. Um, this year we're calling it Bama Bug Fest on the web because why wouldn't it was just like the if we That's didn't the take thing. that opportunity to call it on the web being a bug fest thing. I don't know what. Granted, spiders aren't insects, but they're creepy crawly. People call them bugs, so mm -hmm. it works. But um we're gonna have um lots of guests that are coming. Oh, there they are. I should probably just look at what's on the screen right now. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna have lots of different guests that are coming. Um, we'll have people that are helping um, do drawing lessons. We've got um, people who are cosplayers uh, who come and are dressed up as characters and talking about characters. We've got, um, we even have someone who played an insect themed, um, uh, his name is an actor. His name is Justice League. He's right there. And he played uh, uh, the character Helgramite on the Supergirl show. And he's going to come and talk with us. Actually, those segments, I'm excited about all of the segments. Let's be real, right? I'm yeah. really excited about this whole thing. Um, one of the segments that I think I'm really excited about, too, are these ones where some of these guests are a part of because it's called, we're calling it, um, I'm also a little excited about our title, but <laughs> we're calling it a <laughs> comic book expert and entomologist and a uh, um, and a character walk into a live stream. I'm so like, so there's three different ones. But yeah. so we've got um, some people from the local Tuscaloosa comic book, the comic strip, comic shop. Um, they're coming in along with expert entomologists or arachnologists, depending on who we're talking about. And then we've got the character themselves or the actor themselves coming in to talk about their character all in one place at one time. So oh, that's we're able awesome. to to like we're going to talk to Spider-Man for a little bit and we're able to talk to Spider-Man about his abilities. And then we're bringing in an arachnologist that will be able to, sh to talk about how his abilities compare to real life spider abilities. And then we're going to talk about to the comic book expert to talk about more of Spider-Man's, you know, role in the comic book world and his, his storyline and all of that. I'm just, it's going to be so great. It's going to so be great. Wonderful. I'm excited um, about it. And then we're also going to have, um, we're also going to be joined by lots of different um, experts, entomologist experts um, that are going to be helping us learn about, you know, even like the basic, like, again, kind of what we covered a little bit here today, but like what makes a bug a bug mm -hmm. or what makes an insect an insect. Um, and then kind of talk about some of those just so we can get like a baseline understanding of what it is that we're going to talk about the rest of the month. Um, we also have a stand-up comedy night. That's all insect themed that that's going to happen. We have people from um, like Discovering Alabama is going to come in and help us out with uh, terrariums and taking a hike. Um, we've Ooh. got the UA Arboretum has been kind enough to help us out with some other information. Um, it's just ever, there's been a really wonderful everyone's been really nice and wonderful yeah. to us and helping us put together this great uh, program and you can see there I'm definitely not covering everything because it's nine jam-packed days full of yeah. wonderful insect theme oh oh one of the other ones the library yeah the yeah and so that's what one of the other ones we're gonna do is we're talking about insects and fashion so I'm really excited Ooh. about that but the the program itself um, has always been and, and is this year um, a collaboration between different organizations around town. So the uh, Mildred Western Warnervelt Transportation Museum, the Alabama Museum of Natural History, UA Museums, um, who those two ones are a part of, right? Mm -hmm. And then the Tuscaloosa Public Library has always been a, a, and, and will always be a really wonderful uh, partner for us for this event. So they're there. The Department of Research and Collections at UA is helping us out as is a part of the planning committee as well. And then also this year we were able to work with um, the uh, uh, UA library system. Um, 
they're one of the librarians at the Rogers Library. There he is, Lance. Library he was Lance. able to help us out with things, and they were helped us. <laughs> they Lance helped us put together this great resource guide. So, as you were watching, all of these wonderful, you know, some of these some of these pieces are going to be live, and some of them will be things that are uploaded. But as you're watching them, if you want to find out more about what these things are talking about, you can go to this resource guide and kind of. It has all this great information where you can delve a little bit deeper into all the subjects, mm -hmm. which was wonderful. So um, Lance was able to help us with that. Um, this is our first year having them help us out, which was really exciting. Shout um, out to Library Lance. Yeah, shout out to Library Lance. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I think, I mean, you know, there's been, we've, we're really excited about just the, the event in general, you know, in person or virtual. We're just excited about the, the content and bugs and just sharing bugs with everyone. And so um, this virtual event really gave us the opportunity to expand more and more and get real creative with, yeah. with topics and, and different, um, you know, program ideas and things like that. So we, um, I don't know, we're excited. Each, each day, I feel like I'm jumping around a lot, but there's just a lot happening, which is good. But each day that we have, we have nine separate days that we're offering content and each day is themed. So like mm -hmm. you were really, really into um, spiders, you know, check out all the other days, but also make sure to check out the Into the Spider-Verse day, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we're covering aquatic bugs. A lot of people don't really know a ton about aquatic bugs. They're kind of my favorite things, really, personally. Um, and so we're going to do a day where we do just aquatic insects, which is really cool. So there's something for everyone, for all age groups. Oh, yeah, and this is our schedule. But there's something for everyone. There's something for all age groups. Usually, um, well, yeah, something for everyone. Um, there's stuff like story times with Tuscaloosa Public Library and then a craft following it mm -hmm. based on the book. Um, but then we have everything from that to like in-depth um, discussions with experts about, you know, kind of more like on the academic side, I guess, where yeah. it's like in-depth. Like if you were to go watch a talk at a lecture hall or something, like more along those lines too. Right. So right. we've got everything. I mean, we're just, I'm excited. It starts tomorrow. I can't believe it starts tomorrow. But we are ready. <laughs> um, and it'll go through until July 25th, which was the original date of what would have been the in-person event. So we'll end on the day that we had originally planned to all meet in person. I think it's kind of perfect. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. It's like, yeah, so. it does. It has a little bit of something for everyone. And I know that I'm, I'm not, even people who aren't bug people like me, which I get immersed in it a lot. But I, <laughs> I learn a lot um, each time, but it looks like there are a lot of interesting things that would catch my attention. So yeah. if you're, if you're on the outskirts, like I am, this seems still seems really interesting and I would I'm still going to watch all of it. So <laughs> and before I forget, but I wanted to say kind of like this, what we're doing today, if you're not able to tune in at those exact times, like let's just say you're not able to make the 10 a.m. live one to watch it, everything is going to be available for you to access later as well. So if you weren't able to watch it at the exact time that it's going live, you can definitely, you know, if you have time later that night and you finished watching Hamilton or whatever and you want to watch something else you can watch the you know very hungry caterpillar storytelling so which is a um, wonderful like story that. yes <laughs> so um but uh but we hope that you know people are find something that they're interested in we hope that people can find something that they didn't know that they were interested in that they can maybe get to be interested in right. again and then also that you know maybe find some time like we all i personally need to get out of my house every once in a while and be in a safe space but where i can go out and just be in nature for a little bit and hopefully some of these can you know inspire um things that you can do on hikes by yourself or, or with your family or um and you'll just kind of get to know or understand i guess that world that you're walking around in just a little bit to see it a little differently so I think it'll yeah. be fun. We're we're ready. I think we're excited. Yeah, I'm excited too. I'm excited to watch all of these and um, learn a lot because I feel like I always learn so much from everyone. Um, I learned a lot about bugs <laughs> <laughs> and insects. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
So make sure you join us this week for Bama Bug Fest and go to the website that's on uh, the page that's listed. And Rebecca, I don't know if we have any more questions, but I think that is all. <laughs> uh, no, let's see. Uh... Uh, no, uh, I, not we, this time, not this time, uh, <laughs> for Peter Serafinowitz, uh, but that's a really good suggestion. All maybe. I have to say to that is spoon. <laughs> <laughs> that is a really good suggestion. We'll, we'll consider it. Um, I did have the, uh, if, if y'all wanted to, to just kind of play it before we get out of here, uh, let's see if I can even get it to go. Um. In case anybody was interested in the uh, dog bane video, if I can find it, I had it pulled up. <laughs> Where did it go? Um, and now I don't seem to. Let's see, share screen. Let's see if we can get this to go. Uh, since we were talking about the dog oh, bane beetle, yeah, oh, cool. Sure to... That was uh, Lindsay. That was the video that we took while you and I were there. Oh, okay. Look how shiny. It was a really windy day. It was day. really pretty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was really windy. I think I yeah. had to hold it. <laughs> so, yeah, you can go and uh, watch uh, the isolation observation videos that we've been doing uh, during the uh, quarantine, I guess, that we're still in. Uh, you can go to youtube.com slash UA Museums and you can find all of those videos, including the dog bane video. And uh, you can also uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel there if you want to keep up with any of the Bama Bug Fest content that is going to be happening over the next couple of weeks. That's a really good way to keep in touch with it. You you get notified anytime a video gets uploaded or we go live. So uh, that will always let you know what's happening. Uh, is there anything else before we get out of here? No. I well, I, was saying, I just want to say to make sure that, you know, when, when we get a chance and it's safe to, to visit Moundville and visit that space mm -hmm. and maybe get to find, you know, insects, again, make those observations on iNaturalist and put them in the Moundville um, grouping so that Moundville gets more information, but then you get to learn more too. But just make sure Moundville is an excellent insect resource. So when you get a chance to visit it, please, there's a cat. When you get a chance to visit <laughs> it, please, please do. Oh, nope. <laughs> <laughs> yes we love all of your observations yeah Melville is a great place to to see nature uh whether it be plants or animals or birds or insects or, or bugs uh, so yeah i would definitely recommend it all right well i guess that's uh gonna do it for this museums from your home uh, live stream uh we have decreased our museums from your home live streams down to two days a week uh because of some big event events like bama bug fest uh, especially in the month of july here and uh just as a reminder bama bug fest does start tomorrow so uh make sure you're following the alabama museum of natural history the mildred westerbelt warner transportation museums uh museum and ua museums and you'll uh, be up to date about everything going on there uh lindsay do you you also want to just plug real quick the virtual Indian summer day camp? Is that oh, still well, going on? Well, we're actually, um, we're having, we're full right now, <laughs> <laughs> but, but um, if you are interested, uh, hopefully we'll have it again next year <laughs> or open it for another week or so. So um, yeah, we are actually full for our summer day camp. Very good. Um, That's great. But, we we hope to see you soon. Like we're 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 debating on whether we want to open up a second um, camp. So if you're interested and want us to do that, uh, put it in the comments below and let us know if that's something that you're interested in us doing for another week. And uh, we should mention that Moundville does have an email newsletter now. So if you want to subscribe to that, go to moundville.museums.ua.edu. And there should be a button that says email newsletter. And you just put your email in and that's it. And we'll send you information about uh, what's going on in Moundville if, if you are interested in following up on that. Uh, the only thing else I would probably want to uh, mention before we get out of here is that you can become a supporting a member of UA Museum. So if you want to help uh, Moundville with any of their programming, like the summer Indian, uh, the virtual Indian summer day camp, or any of the other programs they have going on, you can go to give.ua.edu slash museums, and that allows you the chance to become a UA Museum's supporting member. All right. Well, thank you to everybody who was watching live and to anybody who will watch this later uh, for visiting UA Museums from your home. 
All right. Well, happy Mindful Monday, everybody. Bye. Bye.